So cryptocurrencies, is it the currency of crime? So for some reason, this has popped up and became a major issue this past week. We got Donald Trump tweeting and saying, yeah, unregulated crypto assets can facilitate in unlawful behavior, including drug trade and other illegal activity. We also have the U.S. Treasury Secretary. He's saying billions of dollars of illicit activity like cybercrime, tax evasion, extortion, ransomware, illicit drugs can be facilitated by cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Wow, that's a lot to add to the list. And it's really hard to defend from that. I mean, just imagine this. Yo, Box, man, what the hell? You're an asshole. You're a terrorist now. You're supporting terrorism. You think terrorism is okay? You think burning babies and human trafficking, that's okay to you? You want to support that shit? Yeah, that's pretty much what you can get faced with if you're arguing pro-cryptocurrencies. Now, why do we want to argue cryptocurrencies in the first place? And we're going to really examine that in this episode. The case that I'm arguing here is that Bitcoin is such a new and different technology that a new set of laws, a new set of regulation should be put into place to help Bitcoin grow into a currency for everyone and to prevent terrorism and crime and everything that's being accused of right now. So why this? Why all the effort? It's also because Bitcoin is such a new way of working and dealing with things that it shouldn't be put into the same old mode that we have formed over time. Unfortunately, that mode is getting corrupted. The central banks, unfortunately, they're having so much power that even if and even when they're being found guilty of money laundering or (laughs) abusing their customers, there's nothing that the governments can do about it. And this is why we need new regulation for Bitcoin is because we want to break away that mode and set and start with something new. What's so special Bitcoin? What are the properties that can't be replicated elsewhere? Well, 100% is to do with actual ownership. You see, when you hold Bitcoin, like right now I'm holding my Bitcoin in this little wallet over here, you actually have full ownership and rights to that. So you're the only one that can have access to it. No one else in the world can arbitrarily remove funds from that wallet. That's a really important property because at the end of the day, when you earn something, it's yours. You shouldn't be told what to do and political changes shouldn't affect what's happening with your own funds. And that's what Bitcoin really allows is because when you generated that key, it's on this device and no one else in the world knows about it. Now, it also has other properties too. For example, you can transfer anywhere around in the world without any restrictions. And that can't be said about many fiat currencies. For example, right now in China, you're only allowed to take out 50,000 US dollars worth of renminbi per year. There's a tight currency control, exchange control in China. And also when you want to take that currency out of China, you actually got to fill in a form and tell the government exactly what you're going to do with that currency. That's kind of scary, right? So if they don't approve of a property purchase, well, tough luck, you're out of luck. And that's not cool. I mean, you earned that money, it's yours, and you should be do, able to do whatever you want with it. And this is why there's so much interest in China over Bitcoin. And this is a basic human right. We have, we have real ownership, we have freedom of exchange, and finally, we know the supply of Bitcoin. So there's no arbitrary printing of Bitcoin. You can't massively inflate. Right now, the government has power to print as much currency and cause as much inflation as they want. So in the U.S., this is called quantitative easing. In other countries like Venezuela, the inflation rate is so bad that old currencies is just pretty much used as tissue paper. That's how bad it is. And as a person, you, you don't want that to happen to your assets. And this is why Bitcoin is really something new and novel. It's because it really takes that power away from governments and puts it into your own hands. And that's scary for the governments to allow us to do. And this is why there's always going to be opposition to Bitcoin. There's going to be a case where governments will see, oh crap, our power, their ability to print money to get themselves out of debt, that's no longer an option. So this is why there's such a strong need to fight for Bitcoin right now. It's because at the core, governments will always oppose that change what that removes power away from their hands. But at the same time, you know, we've been taught the separation of powers, you know, the legal execution, now financial power that needs 
to be taken away from the government and into our own hands. So what happens to all those media accusations that Bitcoin's used for crime? First of all, let's say get one fact straight. If you want to stop crime and money laundering, you got to look at the bigger picture, which is right now billions of dollars are being laundered by major big banks. In fact, we got this drug bust of one billion dollars, not even a million, billion dollars worth of cocaine found in a ship owned by JP Morgan. That's hilarious. Then we also got HSBC. They have $881 million of money being laundered for the Mexican cartel. Look that up. There's a Netflix documentary about it. It's really insightful about you know, how messed up the big banks, the centralized banks is. So ironically, look in the right places, the billions of dollars. So the, the $321 billion industry, that's favoring hardcore cash right now. Because unfortunately, as it stands, it's a little bit too hard for the general public to use Bitcoin, etc., to launder money and do all this illegal stuff. It's still, right now, admittedly, it's relatively hard to use. Another point of evidence, if you go to Violation Tracker, this is what all the big banks have been found guilty of. This isn't even just like, oh, they've been accused of. This is like outright guilty. And the reason why the banks are getting away with it is because the banks are too big to fail. Right now, at this point, the governments, if they try to just close down a bank like JP Morgan Chase or HSBC, that's going to cause a catastrophe to the people. So unfortunately, it doesn't get done. But at the same time, what's happening right now, why the banks keep doing this is because they make so much more money, more money than the fines. So you know what? They don't care. So this is why the whole media situation's got it the wrong way around. The banks are the problem and Bitcoin provides a way for us to get away from the dependency on the central banks. If in fact, if you look here at what's ha really happening in the cryptocurrency industry, is that companies like Chainalysis that do analyze what's happening on the blockchain, try to track down criminals. These are extremely successful and they're making a lot of money from them. These are now worth billions of dollars, a billion dollar startups working to fight crime. And this is why, this is why we need to encourage the growth of Bitcoin rather than to just shrug it off to say, oh, it's a criminal's favorite. It's used by illegal drug trade and all this terrible tax evasion, cyber crime, whatever. It's, these are just blanket words that the mainstream media uses to cause fear in people. But really what we need to look is look deeper at the root causes of all these problems. So if you do actually care about extortion, ransomware, illegal drug trade, and stopping that. Ironically, you actually need to encourage the growth of Bitcoin and take a look at what's happening with the big banks because ironically, that's where most of the bad stuff happens. And that's it for the video, guys. I'd love to hear if you were at one time confused and thought that Bitcoin was used for crime, like all this mainstream media accusations. Uh, it's kind of makes it for a funny story. I'd love to hear your story down below. And also make a lot of cryptocurrency-related content every week. Check them out on the site here. See you in the next video.